I don't know if you caught the interview that Tucker Carlson did with Nayib Bukele. President Nayib Bukele has been sworn in for a second term. The move has been widely denounced as illegitimate. Is Bukele a bad guy? Is Bukele a good guy? And uh, I, ba I basically said, well, we, I mean, it's, uh, we're looking at, into an impossible, impossible mission here. So we pray. MS-13 is one of the major gangs. And they are satanic also. That was my question. So They're satanic, yes. But, but actually, literally. Our impressive victory was because we won the, the spiritual war. I mean, they were satanic. I think that made it easier. By the way, my name is Joe McLean. I host a radio program called A Catholic Take, where we look at the world through a Catholic lens. I'd love for you to hang out with us. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and let us know what you think in the comments below. I don't know if you have heard about Nayib Bukele all that much. He is the president of El Salvador. But some say he's a bad guy. Some say he is a dictator who has basically broken all the rules to stay in power Listen to this clip that comes to us from Democracy Now! We turn now to El Salvador, where President Nayib Bukele has been sworn in for a second term. The move has been widely denounced as illegitimate and a violation of El Salvador's constitution, which limits presidents to just one five-year term and prohibits consecutive elections. In 2021, El Salvador's constitutional court ruled in favor of Bukele's re-election bid after his allies in the Salvadoran National Assembly illegally removed all five magistrates from the court, replacing them with Bukele supporters. What are you, what? He removed all five just so he can give himself a second term. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? It might be, it might be, but I don't know if you caught the interview that Tucker Carlson did with uh, Nayib Bukele just recently, just releasing it the other day. We're going to be linking to both the interview and the clip that I just played. But it was a very fascinating interview. So the question remains, is Bukele a bad guy? Is Bukele a good guy? Is Bukele uh, the savior of El Salvador? I mean, just on the surface, one thing is for sure, it was the murder capital of the world. Now it is not. Now it is safer than Canada. For crying out loud, let that sink in. Oh yeah, uh, it, many of the diaspora who are who have left and fled El Salvador are making their way back to El Salvador now, and that should be very telling. But there was something else in the interview that I think stood out to me, like a huge, like a huge signal, and I want to share it with you and get your take on it. Listen to this. So. Yeah, we 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 roll up the faces and then. And then we, we, we went after them. Okay, so that's the what, official, that's the official. Yeah, that's the official. What, what's, what's the real? It's a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle. Yeah, it's a miracle. I love that. What yeah. do you mean? Yeah, it's a miracle. You know, uh, when, when gangs started uh, to, uh, attacking us back, basically, they, they killed uh, 87 people in three days, which for a country of... Six million people, it's, it's crazy. Would be the equivalent uh, 60 times, would be the equivalent of having 5,000 deaths in three days, in three, 5,000 murders in the US in three days. And, uh, and uh, I, ba I basically said, well, we, I mean, it's, uh, we, we, we are, we're looking at, into an impossible, impossible mission here. So we pray. And, uh, and we, and we, you prayed in the meeting? Yes, yes, of course, several times, yeah. yeah. What did you pray for? No, to the wisdom, to, to win the war, to have, I thought at the time that we would have civilian casualties. So we, we said, we prayed that the civilian casualties would be as low as possible. And we didn't have any civilian casualties. I want you to let that sink in for a second. They prayed. Could you just imagine for one moment your elected officials, you know, in the middle of a cabinet meeting and going, you know, oh, man, we have no solution here. We're not getting along. We don't agree on anything. It's really bad out there. We should probably do something about all of this. You know what, guys and gals? Let's just take a moment. Let's pray. Let's ask God what, what he wants us to do. Let's, let's seek God's wisdom. Could you just imagine doing that for a second? Could you... Republican, liberal, Democrat, libertarian, anybody on Capitol Hill leading anybody else in prayer? No, not really. So I think it's incredibly fascinating. But I want you to pay attention to something. When you see these clips, when you watch the video, I want you to ask yourself, 
as you're watching it, because I don't know, I don't know, I know Naib Bukele. I have no idea if he's a good guy, a bad guy. I don't know if he's sincere or not. I don't really, I didn't, I didn't even look up whether or not he's Catholic. I didn't, I didn't want to know that part because I don't think it matters for the point that I'm trying to make. When you watch these videos, I want you to look into his eyes. I want you to look at his body language. I want you to see and ask yourself, is his body in tune, in sync with what he's saying? And I think whether, regardless of whether or not you like Bukele, whether or not you think he's a good guy or a bad guy, or the efforts they took in El Salvador to turn things around were justified or not, because some are saying they are not, of course, it does seem to me that his body language is in absolute sync with his words. He seems to be casual, comfortable, and he does seem to be sincere in what he is saying. I think that is a sign. There are a lot of people who will sit in that hot seat and they will squirm. He has no problem talking about prayer. He has no t problem as saying we're seeking God's wisdom in this. Let's listen. Let's continue because I think there's even yet a point even more important to the mystery that surrounds Bukele and what happened in El Salvador. And was everyone in the meeting comfortable with that? Yes, yes. They are. But every, all my security cabinet are believers. They all believe in God. We're, we're a um, secular country, of course, but we all believe in God, so yeah. MS-13 is one of the major gangs. And they are satanic also. That was my question. So very I'm little, sorry, sorry. no, 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 but I, and I would hope yes. you will explain it because very little has been written in the West about this. They're satanic, yes. But, but actually, literally. So that's almost never described no. in English language press as clearly as you just described. What he described, I skipped forward for the sake of time, but he described the beginnings of MS-13 starting in Los Angeles and then being, uh, being exported out of the United States and into El Salvador because they were deported under a former administration. And uh, they just dumped these criminals in El Salvador and El Salvador saw an opportunity, uh, rather the criminals gang elements saw an opportunity there and they took over. But he also describes the satanic culture of these people, this MS-13 gang. They commune with demons. The demons ask them to murder babies as a result. And he talked and he used examples of criminals that they have arrested who've shared these stories of how demons specifically wanted them to go and kill certain babies. Babies. And even the criminal was like, wait, I've killed lots of people, but I don't understand why we're killing babies. It's because, quote, the beast asked us to, close quote. That's what he described. That's the part I skipped over. You can watch it for yourself. We'll put a link to it. But I think this next part is also very telling. I did. No. Which is weird, right? Well, you sort of wonder why. Yeah. If there's a spiritual component that's driving it, why not just say so? Yes. But I guess my point is you saw it as that. Yes, yes, of course. There's a spiritual war and there's a physical war. And the physical war could be... That's, a, that's the unofficial. Yes. That's the unofficial <laughs> version. Uh, the spiritual, if you win the spiritual war, it will reflect into the physical war. So our, I think our, I, I don't know what I would call it, our impressive uh, victory was because we won the spiritual war very, very fast. Well, that... Leads me, I didn't because there were, you didn't have competition. I mean, they were satanic. I think that made it easier. In your inaugural, and I was listening on headphones for the translations. I just want to check this. You said we have achieved this great victory and made this a safe country, and that's the predicate for everything that follows. And the next thing we're going to do in this term is to is to work in the economy to make yeah, it better, grow the economy. Yeah. And you said I have a. Th if, correct me if I'm wrong. You said I have a three point plan. And I'm thinking. I wonder what that is. I don't know, start a Federal Reserve Bank, and you said the first, oh, the first point of my plan is seek God's wisdom. Yes. And that is what you said. Yeah, I said that, yeah. Why, why would that be the first point of an economic why, plan? Why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't it be? He talks about fighting Satanism. I, I, again, just imagine for a second, you, you lived in a country where your elected officials felt a duty and obligation to crush Satan and all of his minions because... They're Satanists because they're evil and good must triumph over evil. And God has given us freedom, capability, resources, and breath in our lungs today to do the right thing and not the wrong thing. It would seem to me, whether or not you like Bukele, agree with his tactics or whatever, 
that at least Bukele feels sincere about seeking God's wisdom and crushing Satan. And we would want all politicians to feel that way. Yet in my country anyway, we live in a world where even the religious, even the conservative so-called Catholics that are serving in office will separate their public life and their religious life in some sort of schizophrenic way, which is bizarre to me. Uh, it kind of reminds me of this conversation a little bit because Tucker Carlson was just recently on the Sean Ryan show where he was you know talking about his own life his how he was raised and his his career what he believes and not believe and uh, Sean Ryan asked him a question about these UFOs UAPs aliens this technology that everybody is crazy about and Tucker said something very interesting he said he stopped asking questions he stopped looking into it why why he stopped because he realized that we are fighting something that is not just some sort of creature from an outer space, from Mars. We're talking about what St. Paul talked about in Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, he says, St. Paul says, be strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. It would seem that some, and maybe not even like a good Catholic, Maybe some are starting to realize that what they're really fighting is not some sort of uh, material battle, but it's a spiritual battle. That's exactly what Bukele said. And he said it wasn't even a fair competition. Satanists cannot compete with the glory of God and with the wisdom of God. Satanists, Satan is not the equal and opposite to God. He is a creature. He is finite. He is a dog on a leash and he's only allowed to do whatever he can. And he's being allowed to, to run and to attack and to devour. It's up to us to put on the whole armor of God and make our stand. Just imagine a country where its politicians made their stand on the wisdom of God. I wish more would do that. Did you like that video? It's okay. You can admit it. It's perfectly fine. Hey, we cover the big stories of our day from inside the church to outside the church to all points in between. And we do it from a Catholic perspective. It's called a Catholic take. It's a radio program Monday through Friday. We live stream it right here on this channel, by the way. So make sure to subscribe, like, and share. We would be very grateful to you. And don't forget, you're going to want to watch this video right here because you don't want to miss anything.